Hello and welcome to AzureMonk.com and in this video we are going to be talking about the AKS networking model. In part 1 of the video we talked about the KubeNet networking model. In this video we will talk about the Azure CNI networking model. If you haven't already watched, please watch the super simplified explanation of the KubeNet networking model by clicking on the link in the description below. Let's get started. If you remember from KubeNet deployment, Every node gets a real IP, whereas every pod gets an IP from an overlay network. In the case of Azure CNI implementation, things slightly change. Pods too get a real routable IP address from the assigned subnet. So let's see how this is done. When we deploy an AKS cluster using CNI, we pick a virtual network and a subnet. Now, we all know the nodes, that is the VMs, gets deployed inside the subnet and receive an IP address from the subnet CIDR range. In the case of CNI, however, the pods too get an IP address from the same subnet CIDR range. Wait a minute, but how do you know which IP address gets allocated to which pod? When we create an AKS cluster, the IP address for the pods gets pre-allocated on each node. So every time a pod gets created on a node, it gets an IP from this pre-allocated pool. Remember, this pre-allocated IP address also comes from the same subnet CIDR range. By default, the maximum number of pods you can deploy per node is set to 30. This value is configurable and can be changed anywhere from 10 to 250, either at deployment time or when creating a node pool. Now, if we need to upgrade our cluster, what happens is a new node is created with pods in the new node and then a rolling update is performed. So this means we'll have to account for one extra node when you plan for the total number of IPs required. In short, the formula for estimating the total number of IPs is this. n plus 1, where n is the total number of nodes that you are estimating for your AKS cluster, plus n plus 1 times 30, which is the number of IPs that are required for the pods that are going to be deployed. So the total number of IPs that are required is n plus 1 plus n plus 1 times 30. Okay, great. Every pod gets an IP from the subnet. What this also means is when any of the pods deployed using CNI tries to communicate to another resource from any other subnet inside of the same virtual network, the target resource sees the IP address of the pods directly. This only works for target resources inside of the same virtual network. If the target resource, however, is outside of the virtual network, then they would see the node IP and not the pod IP. You can change this if you want to by modifying the IP masquerading values using the config map entries. But remember, if you do this when the traffic is routed via a network virtual appliance, the packet might get dropped if not properly configured since a pod is not just a regular virtual machine. Great. The advantage of having a pod have its own IP is that it gives you a slightly better performance compared to KubeNet since there are no additional hops that are needed to get to another pod or a service. Also, Azure CNI provides you the capability to use both Azure network policies as well as Calico network policies. Azure CNI is also needed to deploy Windows containers to quickly recap, in Azure CNI, every pod gets its own IP. The IP addresses are pre-allocated. Total number of IPs required are n plus 1 plus n plus 1 times 30. It gives you a slightly better performance compared to the KubeNet because you're avoiding the number of hops. It gives you support for Azure network policies as well as Windows containers. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in the next video.